In Python, a file is categorized as either tests or binary files. Pandas allow us to work with either tests or binary files, such as Excel and CSV. Functions like the with CSV, with Excel's methods enable us to work with files effectively under a data frame instance. As mentioned, Pandas is mainly used for machine learning in the form of data frames. Once we use Pandas functions to extract the data from our test file or binary files, the data will be formed as a data frame. And Pandas further allow us to perform various data manipulations operations. When we extract data from our test file or binary files, we can optionally pass index, that is the so-called row labels, or the and the headers which is so-called column labels, arguments, or we can assign them later. These SS labeling information in Pandora objects help us to identify and extract data easily. There are two commonly used methods to extract data in Pandas, which are .loc and .iloc methods. The .loc is uh, label-based, but may also be used with a Boolean array. And the .iloc is uh, integer-based, but may also be used with a Boolean array as well. So let me show you an example to see how we could use these two functions. First of all, we import the pandas, and then we use this doc with Excel files to read the data in this um, data Excel file. So we have a header, and also we have a index column. So we just uh, equals to zero and also equals to zeros to uh, represent that uh, we have the header and also the index column. So, and then we transform uh, everything into a data frame. That is the DF right here. Before we start, we can use several functions to allow us to have a better understanding of the um, what kind of data is inside this um, data frame. So say, for example, we can print out the first five row, and also we can print out the last file by using the doc have functions and the doc tail function. Here's the first five row, and this is the um, last five row. And we can also use the um, doc size functions and doc ship function and doc and dime functions to return the total number of the data and to return the number of rows and number of columns and also the number of dimension. So this is the other structures of the data frame. Now let me show you how we can use the doc loc function. In the dot loc functions, we can just uh, simply put um, the row index and also the uh, column, the row name and also the column names in order for us to identify um, the, the data that we uh, we would like to have. So, say for example, here we want to uh, just uh, we want to put out everything in the uh, for for all the columns. And then we just would like to have this C, uh, CKH holdings uh, row. So uh, we just put, put the name in the row and then put the colons. That, mean, that means we want to have the everything's inside, uh, everything, every columns uh, inside this row. So we just print out the extract the data and see what we have. So right now you can see that we uh, we are able to extract the CHK's holdings informations um, that uh, that represent the all of the columns inside it. But uh, of course you can see that these uh, by using these methods the 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 row has been um, the columns has been transposed into uh, into nine rows. But never mind. We we just would like to um, show you uh, how we could extract the data from this. Um, so we can also, <clears throat> um, pacing, say for example, we just would like to have this uh, this value, and then we can also just identify the um, columns that we would like to have. So this is a 52.7 right here. 
And in addition, we can also pull out um, some additional column by providing a list um, to them to to the to the uh, column argument. So, for example, we would like to pull out these uh, these two column value from uh, from this uh, CKH holdings. So you can see that we can actually add to um, adding two two columns by providing a list to them, and we can also um, similarly we can also just um, give uh, multiple input into the row. So here we extract two um, two rows with two elements. So um, this should not be this should not be too too hard for you to do so. Instead of getting the information from this data frame, and we can actually pass information in this data frame as well. But similarly, we can just uh, simply use the, the uh, this dot loc function. Here we we just firstly identify um um this element first say for example we would like to assign new values to it so we can just um instead of um, and just use these equals assignments to assign a new value to it say for example this is 54 right now and let me show you once uh, after assignments the value So right now you can see that after the assignments, this is actually updated to 54. Uh, let me show you clearly. That I'm putting a data hat right there. Uh, so now you can see that the value has been changed to 54. Similarly, we can use the um, doc ILOC functions to do similar work. Again, this is the, the first um, the first argument is the row and the second argument is the column. So say for example, we would like to extract the first row and then we would like to extract everything. So here we have a similar result with the uh, with this um, doc uh, ILOC functions. Uh, say, for example, we just would like to get the first element. Here we go. And similarly, we can also provide an, a list of uh, integers into it as well. So, for example, we just would like to have the, the first row and the third row. Like to have uh, say for example, just send the first two element. Now we could now right now you can have you, you can see that we extract these first row, first two elements, and then the third row, the first two elements right here. We can also use slides to help us to to do similar work. Um, say, for example, we would like to have the first two row, and then with them um, the first two element. So here we go, first two row and the first two element. So, for example, right here we would like to have the every second row, and then we. Nice to help us to do that as well. So every second row. Similar to the to the um, dot loc functions, we can also assign values to it. So say for example, we just um, get the first element right now. It that is um, 
52.7 and we just assign a new value to it. Just say, for example, again, uh, 54. And yeah, oh, I can show the result. So right now you can see that the first element has been changed to 54. So that's it. Thank you for watching.